Thank you, Father. Thank you, yes. Thank you Lord. This is called Unbroken Praise. I know you've heard it a couple times in here, but <clears throat> this song is really about a life of worship. Because worship is not just about the songs we sing or the words we say, but it's a lifestyle. And I've, I've seen a lot of worship leaders uh, over the years that I think they all agree that you can't lead anybody anywhere you've never been. So that that actually functions more so in, even as much so in other things than just worship. You can't lead your kids places you haven't been. Um, you can't, you can't show people the things that are the, the promises of God, the truth of God, unless you've read them yourself, experienced them yourself, prayed about them yourself. That doesn't mean they're not true. That doesn't mean they won't take place. But we are to live the lifestyle. <clears throat> just like the song we sang a few weeks ago, they'll know we're Christians by our love. Well, that love is just not being nice to people. That love is showing them his goodness and his mercy and his forgiveness and his deliverance. All those things is just really spilling it out into people's lives, invading their lives with the truth because they need it. They're invaded every other direction with everything else other than the truth. But in 1 Thessalonians, this is honestly my favorite scripture in the Bible. And I'm going to start at chapter, six, it's, uh, chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. And uh, it says, <clears throat> Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Now, rejoicing, praying, and thanksgiving have a certain type of synergy with each other. And I put a graphic <clears throat> together up here so you could see. They work together and build each other up and are often hard to separate. We see that the heighten, that they heighten the effect and value of each other. <clears throat> prayer and thanksgiving lead to rejoicing. Thanksgiving and rejoicing are types of prayers, and prayer and rejoicing illuminate thanksgiving. The three work together and feed off each other. The three cover the entirety of the Christian life. We rejoice for present times, Pray for future protection and give thanks for past gifts. How many things we know work in threes? Father, Son, Holy Spirit, mind, will, and emotions. So many things. So that is the lifestyle we lead. Rejoice, pray, and give thanks. Hallelujah. Yeah, go ahead. When I was practicing these songs this morning, Something struck me. These songs that we sang, these praise songs leading up to what a lot of people consider worship songs. Uh, this is where one of these lines says, Lord, take his life, let it become your throne. That's what we need to be doing, leading up to that in praise, and in our worship, in our prayer, in our lives daily, in everything we do. We need to make this body God's throne.
Hang on to them. We're going to worship the Lord. We're going to remember Him. We're going to have communion service this morning. Then also, just something a little different. After we get done with communion, we're just going to bring our offerings to the front. And we're going to sing Hosanna. Hosanna means the Lord saves. Oh, Lord, there's an anointing here. (laughs) Why? Because He's here. He's here when you walked in brought apart that anointing Jesus is the anointed one but he anointed us amen by the power of the Holy Ghost see so everybody that calls on Jesus gets that same anointing amen that same life Jesus is life and he became a seed went into the center of the earth but on the third day he busted hell wide open led captivity captive and set the captives free hallelujah We serve a risen Savior. And today marks the beginning of Holy Week. But I tell you what, once you got born again, you got Holy God every day. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't don't have to get Jesus started. You don't have to get him cranked up. He's all all the way. He's always on. Amen. It's us that's got to get started. You know, we're still in the flesh. We got this body of flesh that... We just have to press on. Terry, will you give me a tithe envelope? Thank you, brother. I want to start off with a, uh, a little introduction to what Palm Sunday. This is a devotion I read. And then I want to read a psalm for us. But listen to this. With both ears. For the last 1600 years, Christians around the world remember the last days of Jesus' life during Holy Week. Today is Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday remembers the day Jesus rode into to Jerusalem on a donkey like a rival king to challenge Caesar and his Roman Empire. Like every other empire, Rome controlled, listen to this, Rome, the world, controlled its people with the threat of death. But Jesus came to disarm all kings of their favorite weapon by dying and then raising from the grave. Jesus has performed his seventh and final miracle in John's gospel. He raised his friend Lazarus from the dead. Now this in in John's gospel, he did this last miracle. That's not the only miracle he did. But this last miracle he did by raising Lazarus from the dead was his final proof that Jesus' kingship would disarm death and grant life. All of Jesus' miracles hint toward this in some way. Turning water into wine, healing a sick boy, raising a paralytic on the bed, and feeding over 5,000 people with a little boy's lunch are all or small-scale resurrections. And the people of Israel had an inkling of what all this meant. See, they didn't have the Holy Ghost, but they're, they're, something's pricking their heart here. To them, Jesus was their long-awaited Messiah, the promised king of Israel who would come to heal their bodies, feed their bellies, and take Rome's deadly rule. And in a very important sense, they were right. John 6, 15. When Jesus saddles a donkey, that was the traditional beast of kings, and rides into Jerusalem, the people understand, understand it as the coronation ceremony of their death-defeating Messiah. 
waving palm branches. Not only did they take branches, some of them took their garments, waved their garments, that's what they possessed, and the palm branches. And the crowd gathers around Jesus and sings Psalm 118, which we'll read here shortly. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. John tells us this is all done to fulfill a prophecy of Zechariah 9, verses 9 through 10. That Jesus intentionally rides on a donkey to inflame their hopes that he is the king they have been waiting for. He is the king that can defeat death. He will be victorious over all rival claims to his throne and he will save his people. That's what Hosanna means. Save us, Lord. You know, Sherry shared one of her, uh, she did a song, she did a, she did a little video of her kids at preschool. She made a big old leaf out of cardboard paper. Had those kids, kids up there singing, Save us, Lord. Come save us, Jesus. Save us. Beautiful. Teaching the kids that He is their Savior. He's the prophesied king in Zechariah. But unlike other kings, this is what I like, unlike other kings, Jesus hasn't come to kill, but to die. Like a seed must be buried before it can become a tree, Jesus must be buried before his kingdom comes. He must master death by first dying. Anyone who wants to join his kingdom must be willing to accept his death. The whole reason Jesus came to earth wasn't to conquer empires by killing them, but to die under their influence. Jesus rides into Jerusalem like a king, but like a king who knows the only way to defeat death is to die. That's why these events and teachings don't please everyone, especially the Jewish religious establishment. Many within that religious elite did not believe that Israel's true king could suffer and die. In their minds, a Messiah should fight and win. Just talking about the Sadducees, the Pharisees. They can't imagine a king that doesn't wield death. And they don't understand that their greatest threat isn't Rome, but it's death itself. Unwilling to accept a king who embraces death and suffering, they forced to oppose and reject him and eventually say, crucify him. Palm Sunday is good news. Say good news. <laughs> because Jesus announces that he has come to dethrone and disarm the empires of this world through his death. We can either embrace the rival kingship of Jesus or we, we can align ourselves with powers that be. We can accept Jesus' coming death as the way to new life or fight to keep our lives as we know them and eventually lose our life. We can either pledge allegiance to Jesus just like we pledge allegiance to that flag, to his kingdom or join the religious establishment that is still ruling this world today. So I pray this Psalm Sunday that each one of us, watching or not watching, will accept Jesus as the king who died and was raised to show that death and the empires that wield it are defeated. Amen. Kelsey, if you'll, you can pull Psalms 118 up. It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now say, let Word of Worship Center, let all Christ's children now say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now say, that's the priesthood, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. I called upon the Lord in His distress. The Lord answered me and He set me in a broad place. The Lord is on my side, I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is for me among those who help me. Therefore, I shall see my desire on those who hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations. This is King David. He was a king, but Jesus is king of kings. All nations surrounded me. But in the name of the Lord, David said, I will destroy them. They surrounded me. Yes, they surrounded me. But in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. 
They surrounded me like bees. They were quenched like a fire of thorns. For in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. You pushed me violently that I might fall, but the Lord helped me. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die, but live. Hallelujah. And declare the works of the Lord. That's your purpose. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open me the gates of righteousness. I will go through them. And I will praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous shall enter. I will praise you for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has now become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. <laughs> Save now, I pray, O Lord. I pray, send now prosperity. We're, gonna be, we're teaching on prosperity Wednesday nights. It's already here. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord and he has given us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will praise you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. If we'll pass out the elements for the communion. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise be the Lord. Who knows that God is a help in time of need? He is the righteous king of all the earth. <clears throat> what the Pharisees, what the religious people couldn't see, other people saw. They didn't understand what Jesus was doing, but they believed because of the miracles they had seen. How many believe we're going to see greater miracles in our day? Because before Jesus comes back for his church, the church is going to rise up and be the church that he has established it to be. The church of the just, the church of the righteous, the church of the redeemed, the church of the blessed. Hallelujah. You know, you take, I had clothes this morning. They were a little wrinkled. I put them in my dryer. I've got a de-wrinkle cycle. It does pretty good, but sometimes you need an iron sometimes to get some of them out. While we got the Holy Ghost. Because Jesus said, before I return, I'm coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. So what's going to get rid of the wrinkles? It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. It was on the day of Pentecost that it was poured out. And this is that. Amen. We remember Jesus. He was the lamb that was slain, but he rose from the dead, victorious over death, hell and the grave. And he said, don't you go nowhere, disciples. Don't you go nowhere. Don't you go nowhere. Don't you go nowhere. Until the day of Pentecost, wait here in Jerusalem until the gift of my father be poured out. And we get to celebrate the communion. We get to celebrate the life of Jesus. And he wants us to be filled with overflowing. Amen. So let's take this cup. We're going to, we get to celebrate his death, burial, and resurrection. We get to celebrate the Passover. But before he went to that cross, he went to his friends. Come on, he went to his friends. And he sat down and he broke this bread. They knew what he was doing. Jesus knew what he was doing. He was fulfilling prophecy. He was fulfilling every jot and every tittle. He was dotting every I, crossing every T. He would be the man that would be on the cross. The man, God, the man with God's plan that would bring healing, not to some but to all take this bread this represents our healing the body of the lord jesus christ that was broken so ours could be made whole mike griffin we send forth the word we thank you lord for sending jim howard to mike griffin right now to to the hospital lord he's believe he's had some heart problems but father we're believing right now lord that you're sending the word you're sending a man you're sending a man named jim howard that's going to bring faith to mike griffin and you want to raise him up lord because, Lord, you said when one in the body hurts, Lord, we all hurt. So, Lord, we, pre we speak to that hurt and command Mike's body to be mended in our body here, Lord, in faith. Take the bread. 
Our God is a consuming fire. Our God is a healing Jesus. Our God is the Savior and King. And before he left this, before he went to that cross, he looked at his disciples and he said, this is the blood. I'm cutting a new covenant today. No longer will there be goats and bulls required their blood because Jesus was going to offer up his blood, his life, a living sacrifice, truly without sin. And he took this cup and he said, drink. And when you drink, drink all of it. And know that I will not drink of it again until I drink it with you and new. Amen. There's going to be a day we're going to sit down at the marriage supper of the Lamb and Jesus is going to drink a new cup with us and there's going to be no more curse. Amen. So Jesus, we thank you for that sacrifice as we receive, receive this cup today, Lord. It's called the cup of blessing. That, Lord, you are the Savior that came and you are the Savior, the King that's coming again. And we honor you with our life today in Jesus' name. Now let's take those palm branches and let's give God the highest praise. Let's give Jesus the highest praise because he is Hosanna. Hosanna has saved us. The king has saved us. Let's praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand. Thank you, Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Praise God. That's right. There's no plane higher anywhere. Praise God. Thank you.
in one hand. Put it in your right hand. I ain't gonna put my name on this. Y'all, y'all open this and you'll see my name on it. My, me and my wife's name because we in covenant, amen? I want you to put your offering in one hand and keep these palm branches in the other hand. The same God that loves you is the same God that blesses you. And he blesses you in your finances. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We praise you today, Father. Lord, you have been a blessing to us. You have blessed us to be a blessing. And Jesus, we invite you into every area of our lives. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the highest. Lord, we lift you up today, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you lift us up. You have lifted us up out of the miry clay. You have saved us to be a witness, Lord. You have filled us with your Holy Spirit. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for filling our bank accounts. That, Lord, we'll always have more. In every sufficiency, we'll have the grace that we will abound to, to be able to meet every good deed, every good work, Lord, that you put across our path. That, Lord, we'll be able to reach out there and save the sinner man, Lord be able to bless him we'll be able to pay we'll be able to feed the lost feed the hungry lord save the lost to lay hands on the sick and see the sick recover so fathers we give you our best today we thank you for giving us the best giving us jesus thank you father for your sacrifice thank you lord for giving us jesus and we give back to you today a heart of gratitude and give you the praise for it in jesus name amen you can bring your tithes and offers and worship the lord I like that green tie. I was looking through my I was looking through my closet and I couldn't find that. Oh, I didn't dig deep enough. I think I had one back there green. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. We just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you into here today, Lord. We thank you, Father God. You said in your word, where two of us are gathered together, Lord, that you're right there in the midst. Lord, without you, Father God, without your spirit, there's nothing in man. Without you, Father God, we are lost. But with you, Father God, you gave the greatest gift, and you have given us the gift of life, and that more abundantly. So, Lord, we just thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, to inhabit you have inhabited our praise today. And Holy Spirit, we just thank you that you manifest Jesus to us today. Lord, the same miracles that Jesus did, he said the church will do. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your for your gifts manifesting in your body today, Lord. The gifts you gave to men, all the fivefold ministry gifts, and all the good gifts you gave to men, Lord. We would just ask for you, Father God, to let them manifest, Father, not just in this place, but to the world, Lord. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. I think I'm going to finish uh, a series that I started, gosh, I don't know, maybe five, six weeks ago about being... Be carefree to stay free. In other words, to, to, to enjoy the liberty. Say liberty. liberty. This is America, the land of the free, home of the brave, right? That's what I was brought up to understand. Well, it's not because of great men. That, I mean, there are great men that sacrifice, but it's because God gave his son, his only begotten son, that brought freedom to all men. Without Christ, America would never have been established. There would have been no freedom. You know, before, before the children of Israel could get free, they had to have a deliverer. They had to have somebody that believed in God and believed his promises that would speak his word, what? By faith. And God raised up Moses. His name means drawn from water. 
Well, I'm telling you right now, God is still drawing people up out of the miry clay. He's still drawing kids up out of the darkness and putting his light in them. That they, all, this, all this evil that we're seeing, God's raising up an army. He's raising up a generation, not just of adults, but from children. I just had a, me and Lisa had a good discussion talking about our kids up here. We're not teaching them, we're not, te- we're not mixing religion with the word. We're giving them the word of God. Amen? Amen. I said it just, it just pricked my heart. I'm not, against, I'm not against churches. I'm not against people. But I don't want to mix religion with the word. They don't mix. Because if you mix religion, you lose the power. I don't want, we're not going to lose the power. We're going, to raise the, we're going to raise the bar. We're going to raise the power. Amen? Because it's the word of God and the spirit of God. If they agree, we got power. And if you go in there and start mixing and diluting it with man's way of thinking then it starts taking the traditions of men, the Bible said, it makes the word of God of none effect. And we're not going to be a church. We're going to be affecting people, affecting and infecting them with the word of God. Amen. They're going to look at us and say, you don't, you don't look like you've got a care in the world. No, I don't. I am carefree and I'm staying free. Because Jesus makes me free. You want to be free? Come follow me. That sounds like Jesus. That's right. Amen. I'm creating his image and in his likeness. Follow me. You want to see freedom? Follow me. I, I go to church on Sunday and Wednesday, but that, that ain't where church ends. That's just where I start and learn some things. Then I get out of here and this is where church begins. Amen. It's in the darkness. Amen. We ain't going to be silent. Amen. Jesus wasn't silent. He was just about the Father's business. See, they tried to get him off course. Jesus said, I ain't going there today. I'm going to Bethany today. Amen. Let me get into the message a little bit. I got all kind of hallelujah. Just to remind you, Mark 4, 38. When Jesus was asleep, say asleep. We just Terry just somebody just read about having Reed just opened up. How lay me down, Lord, that I have sweet sleep. When I sleep, I like to have sweet sleep. I like to sleep. The dog likes to wake me up in the morning. Kelsey's gonna work on this dog. She trained him, but there's, there's a rooster that'll crow. Drives him nuts. He won't bark at it, but that, when that rooster hits at about 6.30, 6.45, then the dog goes crazy. I think I'm just going to let him loose. Go find what you was. Go get him. Go get, the, go get the rooster. Go Take off and go get him. Put an end to him. <laughs> I don't know. The dog might get shot, you know, down trespassing because I don't have chickens. Somebody got some chickens around here. But I tell you what, there's a devil out there. And I tell you what, he don't like to hear the word of God. And he don't like it coming out of your mouth. <laughs> Amen. Keep speaking it. Keep preaching it. Because keep proclaiming. Amen. That Jesus, he's alive. And he lives forevermore. And his mercies are new every morning. And he was asleep on the hinder part of the ship. Jesus had this. I'm not going to read everything, but he just taught all day about the sower sowing the word. He sowed the word. Talked about how good God is, how good his father is. We're going to go out here and we're going to preach this gospel, boys. See, he called the disciples for a purpose. Come follow me. We've got to go get people free. Amen. And he said, we're going to the other side. There's some people over there in bondage. And we're going to the other side. And Jesus went to sleep. But a storm came up. Did Jesus wake up? No. He's still asleep. Sweet sleep. Hey, Amen. He had sweet sleep, Reed. He was sleeping. He needed his strength. Remember, he's God, but he's not operating as God. He's operating as a man that needs rest. But we need to sleep, don't we? We need at least seven, eight hours. The world will tell you that. My God, I'll tell you that. <laughs> you know, I need sleep. <laughs> I like to sleep. And they woke him up. The disciples woke him up. Might, might have shook him. I don't know. Master, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Don't you care that we're going to die out here? No, Jesus didn't care because he's not the author of death. Come on, Jesus is the author of life. He had no threat that he was going to, he said, we're going to the other side. They're supposed to be in faith with him, not in fear. And that's what happened. They got in fear and Jesus had to get up and get rid of the fear. Amen. Because he's going back. He probably wanted to go back to sleep if it wasn't time to get up. And Jesus, verse 39, arose, rebuked the wind, said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. When Jesus speaks, everybody better listen. <laughs> but not every, The devil's hearing and listening when Jesus speaks. But when he was speaking to re- religious people, they just got mad. They gnashed with their teeth. But he's, he's God. But he's speaking the truth because he, he's speaking to their darkness. He knows that they're, not, they're making all these people do all these things, keep all this. But they ain't keeping the law. 
They getting their, they're getting their pockets rich. They, they keeping Caesar happy. Talking about the religious crowd. Jesus was after those that were lost. He didn't come to save the righteous. He came to seek, seek and save those that were lost. Amen. Now the righteous, they can get saved too if they repent and turn. But he wasn't preaching to them. He was preaching to those that have ears to hear. Say, Lord, say, Lord, I got ears to hear. Speak, Lord, your servants hear. And he'll speak. Sometimes it might sound like thunder. I tell you, every time I hear it thunder, I look at somebody and say, God's speaking, you listening? <laughs> Amen. I want to hear what the Lord's saying. And I want to do. Let my deeds outrun my words. Amen? Amen. See, faith without works is dead. You got to get up and do something. If you hear something, get up and do it. Amen? Right. Don't wait. Jesus got up and he rebuked that wind and, and talked to the waves and said, Now, disciples, what are you doing in fear? We're supposed to be in faith. Amen? That's our place, is in faith. And he said unto them, why are you so fearful? Man, we know as teachers, you go to school and, and there comes a time there's a test, right? And you look at the, where have y'all been listening? <laughs> I've been teaching for a, a semester, a quarter. Where have y'all been? I'm seeing about an eighth down here. <laughs> Not a quarter. See, we want the, the, Jesus wants us to pass the test. The test that the devil's bringing, not God. See, God's sowing the word. He's sowing Jesus. Jesus is sowing the word because the test has come. The devil's coming for the word. He comes for the word that's preached. He don't come. There's some, there's some churches, the devil ain't even there. Why? The word ain't there. There's some churches, call themselves churches, that are satanic temples. They ain't a church. They're a synagogue. They're a, they're a, they're a place of devils. Amen? A doctrine of devils. That's what Jesus called some of the churches. Because you've left your first love, Jesus. He's the lover of my soul. And if you love Jesus, it'll show in your deeds. Amen. Why are you so fearful? And they feared exceedingly more about Jesus. They looked at one another, what man is this that even the wind and sea obey him? Well, I'll tell you, that's God's son. Amen. That's God's son. But see, they we've got to give them some credit here. They didn't have the Holy Ghost yet, but they wasn't born again yet. They didn't have the Spirit within. But they've been around Jesus for three years. They should have known if he says you're going to do something, it's going to happen. Amen? See, there's genuine faith in God, which will cause you to sleep in the middle of the storm. And anybody ever had some genuine leather, and then you bought some of the imitation leather because it's a lot cheaper? Well, I tell you what, you buy the cheap stuff, it's, you, you'll see it because it's going to wear out a whole lot quicker than the original leather. Amen? Well, I tell you what, fear has torment. And it will cause you to panic and be paralyzed in the storm where faith is the complete opposite. It will cause you to rise up in the middle of the storm and say, if the devil says I ain't going to have it by God, I'm going to have double <laughs> portion. Amen? I tell you what, I went to Whitman Park last week, me and Leo. I took The Bible says go out in two by twos. I, I've been wrong sometimes going out and preaching. The Bible says go out two by two. Why? I need somebody with like manner faith, like I do, believing when I go into somewhere. So you got two, you got God's power flowing. Amen. If you just got one, you know what the Bible, do what the Bible says. He sent them out two by two. Because God wants to see a great breakthrough. Amen. Amen. Come on. Just do what the Bible, I want the Bible results. That means I need to do what the Bible says. And I tell you what, it showed up. We showed up, we went for breakfast about an hour and a half before the service. Had our meal. First thing we do, you know, Leo, he's, he's, he's got that evangelistic spirit. The lady comes over. I done ordered the coffee because he's parking the car. He let me out so I get a table. Amen. That's what we do. Amen. I try to tell my wife to do that sometimes, but she said she, a lot of times she don't let me out. But anyway, we go in there. I get the table, and Leo comes in. Coffee comes, and she comes over, and first thing she does, she looks up that way. He looks up the way. She said, man, can we, is, can, is there anything we can pray for you about? Immediately, the lady says, my papa, he's having a problem with his kidneys. Leo grabs her hand, so I grab Leo's hand. We praying, speaking the blessing over her. Don't know her, but we know Jesus. Jesus said, you're going to Koran's Cafe. That's where we went. We're going to Koran's Cafe. And you know what? We fit, about halfway during our meal, she comes back to fill our coffee up. And she goes, oh, by the way, somebody's paid for your meal. Don't worry about it. Everything's taken care of. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Felt a little uh in my body, you know. See, now, Kelsey had a, I thought Kelsey was delaying me because she was working on getting a, 
getting something here for church, and it took her about 10 minutes to download it off my computer. And I'm like, Kelsey Leo's out there waiting. His car is running. He's, you know, he's, take, he's my ride. So I patiently just started praying in the Holy Ghost, you know, and walking around in the house. How long is this going to take? Ten minutes. But if, I, if we would have not waited, if Kelsey hadn't delayed, guess what? I'd have paid for breakfast. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Just trust the Lord. Don't get in a hurry, right? Just pray. I mean, we were going to be early, but I'm just saying, my pastor taught me, if you're going to go somewhere, if, you go, if you're serving the Lord, be there 30 minutes early and be willing to stay 30 minutes late. Amen. Well, Leo was there at least 45 minutes early. Amen. But I tell you what, it all worked out. If I got in a hurry, we would have missed that. But, you know, God still would have blessed us, but that would, that would, have, would not have happened. So I want to be free, carefree. Amen. So I should, just, I should have listened to my message. I should have just been carefree. I ain't caring about this. We're going to be there in plenty of time. God showed up. <clears throat> See, God cares for us more than we know. And I, and I, want you, I keep saying this, but Jesus misses us. He misses his family. He misses his church. Amen. He won't, he's waiting for the Father to say, tap, waiting for that tap on his shoulder to say, Son, go get him. The rapture, the snatching away. Jesus is, is, is he's missing us, amen? I miss mama. Mama's in heaven. I'm going to see her again. Right. Jesus misses us. He wants to physically hug us. He misses us, amen? It wasn't easy for him to lay down his body and physically die. He sweated drops of blood, said, Father, if there is any other way, let this cup pass from me. See, that's his soul, that's his mind, that's his will, that's the emotions crying out because we were never created to die. So God's having to say, God, Father, is there any other way? I knew I agreed with this, but is there any other way? But not my will, Lord, your will be done. And that settled it. Three times Jesus went back, three times, Wayne, three times. Just making sure, Lord, if there is any other way, Jesus wanted to make sure just physically in his mind that he wasn't missing the will of the Father. And that's what he wants us to say. That's where God wants to make sure. Lord, is, is this where you need me to be? Is this where you need me to be? All right, that settles it. Then I don't have to ask that question anymore. Settled it. Done. See, the will of God is the word of God. So if we're questioning the will of God, we need to get in the word. And a question. <clears throat> we have to worry about the question. Amen. Lord, this is your will. <laughs> See, we don't have to pray, Lord, am I supposed to give at church today? You shouldn't have to pray that prayer, right? We know we're, God has made us a giver. Givers give, right? Uh, donkeys are different than racehorses. I don't care what you do. If you, if you, if you want a racehorse and you want to win a race and you say, I'm going to take this donkey. I think the Lord said that he's going to give me. I think the Lord said this donkey is going to be my racehorse. Well, I'll tell you right now, you ain't heard from God. Because you could take that donkey, that mule, and you could tell him all day long that he's a racehorse, and you could take him to wherever they race some horses at, Kentucky somewhere, and you could put him in that stall, and when that door flops open, that old floppy-eared donkey's going to be a donkey. And that racehorse is, pew, he's gone. Why? It's his nature. A mule's nature is different than a racehorse. If you want your donkey to win a, to a race, you're going to have to pray that he gets born again. <laughs> his nature's got to be changed. Amen. To be carefree, you got to know Jesus. You got to be born again to understand the way the kingdom operates. Give, Lord. Give first. Yes. Why? God don't need your money. He loves you, and for every seed brings forth after its kind. If you give at church to God, God's going to give. He's going to cause men to bless you at the at the at the restaurant. But receive it. Don't, don't go chase the waitress down. No, go find out who, who gave me this. I got to pay them back. Don't do that. Receive. Receive the blessing. Amen. And then just if, if, you, if you really feel convicted about it, pay for somebody else's food. Amen. Because it's more blessed to give than to receive. And watch it. God will double bless you before you get out the door because he is after our heart. Amen. He don't need our pocketbook. He needs our heart. See, this is where God is not so concerned about Randy loving him. He's really concerned about, does Randy know I love him? Because see, just like Wayne said, you can't give somebody something they don't have. Jesus and Peter, John 21. 
John 21, verses 15 through 17. So when Peter and Jesus had dined, that means they had dinner. Dined. <laughs> Man, look at that. I got a revelation. That's where the word dinner comes from. Amen. Y'all didn't get that. That's revelation to me. So when they had dinner, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, Lovest thou me? That's the Greek word agape. Simon, do you love me higher than any kind of love in this world? Peter, do you love me unconditionally? More than these. And Peter said, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I, I love thee. And Peter was saying, Lord, you know that I feel you, you. In other words, Peter said, No, Lord, you know I love you like a friend. I just love you like a friend, Jesus. See, Peter's done been down this road. He, Peter done been by these threes one time. <laughs> he denied him. He said, Lord, no, you, 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 no, Lord, you know, I, I like you like a brother. I'm not going to cuss. He's holding this. I'm not going to cuss at you, Lord. Done, done this one time. And Jesus said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you agape me, Peter? Do you love me? Would you lay down your life for me, Peter? And, and Peter said, yea, Lord, you know that I agape you. I mean, that I filio you, Lord. I love you like a brother, Jesus. Me and you friends, we friends. And he said to him, feed my sheep. Every time the Lord said, feed my sheep, what's he doing? Prophesying. <laughs> feed my sheep. Even though you just like me like a brother, feed my sheep. Jesus is giving me something deep here. Amen. Feed my sheep. If he would have said fish, Peter would have got a little bit quicker. Feed my fish. <laughs> feed my sheep. See, purpose has changed. Same passion, different purpose. Come on. Peter loved the fish, but now I need you fishing for people, Peter, because I got to go to the Father, and I need somebody that knows how to get them and is bold enough to cuss them to get them. Amen? Come on. Jesus, the Father said, pick this one, Peter. <laughs> he, didn't, he, 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 he soon cut you as love you. <laughs> Amen. He, come on, he cut off the priest, high priest's ear. Didn't even think twice about it. Man, you need somebody around there. You know, the devil's out here. He's out to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus was building a kingdom. Amen. He's building a team. <laughs> Come on. I talked to uh, another conversation I was having with Lisa upstairs. You remember when, uh, I think it was Philip, said, come see a man. Come see a man that the Bible talks about. Who was he talking to? Was it his uh, brother? Was it John? Come see a man. Come see a man who tells us everything. And he was talking to Nathaniel. Nathaniel, come see some, Come see this man. It's the Messiah. He's the Messiah. And Nathaniel was underneath the tree. And when Jesus, now you got to understand, when he was, come see a man, this Jesus of Nazareth, he said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? In other words, he, there's, some, there's some bad people down there, man. Can anything good, is that, a good is, that a, is that somebody speaking good of somebody? Can anything good come of Mooresville? <laughs> Pastor Jackson, where's he? He Mooresville. Can anything good come out of Mooresville? I've heard Mooresville, Mooresville. Well, I'm there. So? But when Jesus sees Nathaniel come, you know what Jesus said? Can anything good come out of... No, he said, look! A man of Israel who is no guile, no deceit in you. See, Jesus is always about building a kingdom, building somebody up, not tearing them down. Because that's the devil. And you know what that did? That lifted him up. He said, but, and then Jesus gave him a word of knowledge. <laughs> he said, yeah, I saw you underneath the tree, and I'm not sure what he saw him doing, but Jesus pricked his heart by the gifts of the Spirit. You know what Nathaniel said? Thank you. I even got the word on the screen. Rabbi, teacher, you are the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. Next verse. I like this. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. There's that fig tree. Faith in God. Give me a fig. I saw you under the fig tree. You believe me? You shall say this. We shall see greater things than these. Amen. You come to church because the pastor is talking about some, he laid hands on somebody and somebody sick got healed. God's going to raise people from the dead. God's going to give blind, open blind eyes. God's going to open the ears of the deaf. He's going to do greater things than these that you speak and believe through his church. Amen? This is Jesus talking about. I tell you what, Jesus has got words of life, man. <laughs> 
Don't, don't die around Jesus. Mama, have a funeral. Jesus say, pay the funeral man back. Raise your son from the dead. <laughs> he would destroy a funeral procession. Amen. Jesus, he, he's all about life and that more abundantly. And then Peter said to him the third time. Here they start, they still dining. They didn't, they didn't fit, got their bellies full. You know what happens with men when you get the bellies full? You're either recline, not dying anymore. You, you know, Jesus is talking about, Jesus talking about missions here. <laughs> Jesus is talking about missions, Peter. Peter, third time, do you love me? This time he said, Peter, do you love me like, do, can you at least love me like a brother? Jesus dropped the agape. You know what I'm hearing? I'll take whatever you got, Peter. <laughs> Amen, come on. I'll take, if you can love me like this, feed my sheep. Because God knows if he can get you, he can get, if he can get it to you, he can get it through you. Feed my, see, it ain't feed my sheep. Feed my sheep, what? The word of God. Amen? And that's what, what happened on the day of Pentecost. Peter said, this is that. Spoken by the prophet Joel, this is that. And he did a little Jew. Jew. <laughs> jig. <laughs> he was a Jew, amen? Hey, he did a little Jew jig. Whatever they did. The Holy Ghost came upon Peter. They were filled with the Holy Ghost, and he went fishing, amen? Caught 3,000 souls on the day of Pentecost, spoken in, speaking in tongues, prophesying, glorifying God, amen? That's how we get people saved. We glorify God, not the devil. See, the devil wants us to focus on everything he's doing. Jesus said, we're going to the other side. Carefree what the devil doing because we de Jesus defeated him. He defeated him when he walked the earth. See, God don't need us when we're six foot under. He needs us when we're above ground. Amen? Amen. Preaching the gospel while we're above ground. Amen. And that anointing is strong enough. We even read in the Old Testament, once you die, there's enough anointing in somebody's bones, the word of God, to raise somebody to dead. Right. Amen? Amen? Maybe, Lord, just, just put me, don't bury me. Just lay my body on the ground. Let somebody touch me and be filled with your spirit. You understand? You see that? Man, don't put me. I don't care what you do with my body. Put me on the ground. Let somebody touch me. And get that same anointing, Terry, that raised Jesus from the dead. Amen? That's life. One day, we're going to, when Jesus says, come up hither in the rapture of the church, those that are dead are going to be raised incorruptible. And those that remain say, I'm going to, I want to be the one that's remaining. And I'm going, I'm going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. That's, that's an atomic second. I'm going back to 33 years old with hair flowing, going to see Jesus, and I'm shouting all the way, Hallelujah, the King is here. Amen. Because He lives, I shall live also. Peter said, Jesus said, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. You see that little thing right here? Maybe it's on this side. It's there. I know it's there by faith. John 21, 17. Even though I see it, had I ever see it, see it, I believe it. Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. You know who gave me this? My pastor. Amen. My same pastor that taught me is on the way to see Mike Griffin, who had a problem with his heart, had, is in the hospital. See, what's he doing? What, is, what do pastors do? Feed the sheep. You know what he's going to feed Mike? Faith. Man, he's a faith man. He going, he going, he might, 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 they might be walking in this door any minute. <laughs> hey, man, hey, that's what we got to believe. They might, Jim might be, get in the car. I'm, I'm healed. Walking with two new, brand new knees. I know he's had knee, knee replacement on one. God might just go ahead and fix the other and say, get on out of here. That, that's, that's miracles. Amen. We shouldn't be shocked if we see them come in the door. Like they were, when they saw Jesus walking on the water, they, they seen the miracles. They shouldn't have been shocked. They thought it was a ghost. I'm not talking about the Holy Ghost. They thought it was a, a spirit, an evil spirit. He said, fear not. <laughs> Be not afraid, it's I. <laughs> Man, come on back, Jim and Mike. Finish, I'll, I'll give, we'll give Mike Griffin the, the mic. Finish this message, Mike. Touch, thank you, Lord. <laughs> you remember 10 lepers? Asked Jesus to heal him. What did Jesus tell him? He said, go show yourself to the priest. If you read, to believe you were free from leprosy, you had to go to the priest to get free. Come on. Jesus said, go show yourself. What's he saying? They were healed as they went. By faith, they had to go. If they just stood there looking at Jesus, they were, can you not lay hands on us? He said, go to the priest. Go to the word. The word said, if you go to the priest, so he just sent them to the word. Nine of them went. One of them what? 
one of them came back and said, thank you, Jesus, for caring for me. He said, where's the other nine? Wasn't there nine? And he was made whole. <laughs> Amen. I tell you what, it pays to be a teacher's pet. <laughs> you know? If we had some of your kids, I'd say, bring your teacher apples, whatever he likes, whatever she likes. Because Jesus likes people to say, thank you. Amen. They were made whole. What do you think the other nine said when they saw him? Where'd you get your leg from? You should have came back and told Jesus, thank you. <laughs> everything was made. Everything that was gone was, came back, Wayne. Hallelujah. It came back. Why? Devil had it. Devil took it. Jesus said, he didn't create that body. God said, I created the body. Now be whole. Man. I'm sure there was a ministry started right there. Mm. <laughs> God cares for us, saints. And we can't give somebody something when we don't have. Now, we can give them religion all day. We can tell them we love them, give them sympathy. We can sympathize. You know what? That ain't going to get them healed. It's not going to get them saved. We got to give them the Word of God. The unadulterated Word of God. I like what Jesse says. He's an evangelist. And I've got that same spirit on the inside of me. Admit it, quit it, and forget it. <laughs> Three things right there. Admit it's sin, quit it, and then forget it. Be carefree. Make sure you're born again. <laughs> Amen. You got to be born again. Because I can't, I can't, don't confess your sins to me, confess them to Jesus. Because he's the one that has removed them as far as the east is from the west. Amen. So why should I go to a priest and keep confessing my sins? Why don't you get born again and quit sinning? Glory. <laughs> That'll preach, won't it? Not in a lot of churches, but it'll preach here. Jesus took my sin. Why should I want to go back to him? Why should I want him? Amen. And B, I can live carefree. He took away my sin consciousness and gave me righteous consciousness. I'm in right standing with God, not because of what I did, but what my Savior Jesus did. Amen. That makes me free, carefree. You know, they even make chewing gum out there. Go ahead and get you a pack. You can help yourself remember, I'm carefree. I think they still make that. They used to make carefree bubble gum. Hallelujah. <laughs> put it before your eyes. Put it in your mouth. Believe it. Psalms 133.3. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descends upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord, I like this, commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. See, our life should be blessed if we're serving Jesus. It should be blessed. See, a tree should have fruit. Jesus said, you know, you'll know them by their fruit. Our fruit should be love. Not God's agape love. I love you enough to tell you what you're doing is wrong. Amen? Peter, you cursed. See, Jesus didn't have to say, Peter, you, you denied me three times. Jesus told him he was going to do it. He, he didn't tell him again. I he didn't tell him I told you so. Jesus did not say I told you so. What did he say? Feed my sheep. Why? Sin's forgiven. Feed my sheep, Peter. See, God knows his heart. All that other stuff was in his head because he wasn't born again. Amen? See, God's looking at Peter's heart. I ain't changed my... Feed my sheep, Peter. The, I called you to feed my sheep. <coughs> See, a person's last words often carry much weight. When the end looms near... The extraneous is stripped away. No more patience for pretense. No more time for tipping toeing around the edges. Talking about when your last words, you ain't got time. You ain't got time to do all this. Here lies the most important, the vital thing that must be conveyed. Talking about the, the, the meal that Jesus had, the Last Supper. After sharing a meal and bowing to wash their feet, Jesus must have looked around that, som that somber circle of faces in the upper room. James, the son of thunder. I like, he gives, gives his people nicknames, Terry. John, the beloved. Peter, the rock. These men had deserted all to follow him. For three years, he had taught in the synagogues. He had instructed them on the hillsides. He had demonstrated his power over death and demon possession. Jesus knew Jesus knew this was their final conversation. 
He, wouldn't be, he was going to be a lamb slaughtered. He would shut his mouth and not say anything else. No more reclining around the campfires together. No more laughter over shared meals. No more miracles or marvels. No more questions or corrections. And he did not hesitate. Leaning in, he began to speak with urgency. Over their bowed heads, he spoke one final prayer. As he neared the conclusion of his earthly ministry, see, you want to be carefree and stay free? Listen to what Jesus is saying. What was on his mind? Did he pray for their prosperity? And when I think we got this song, we'll play it here at the end. You'll probably know it before we get there. (laughs) Did he pray for their prosperity? You mentioned it. He knew the weight of the mission that they they would soon undertake. He knew the painful sacrifices and the price that ministry would exact. But knowing the toll, he could have prayed for their prosperity. He could have prayed for the, the success of the assignment. He could have asked for all the resources of heaven, but he didn't. He could have prayed for power. He could have petitioned for crowded coliseums and standing room only stadiums where supernatural miracles and divine wonders have taken place that would draw unbelievers into the presence of God, but he didn't. Over and over, Jesus asked for one thing, that we all would be one. One. God is in Jesus. Jesus is in us. Perfect in unity so that the world may know that God has sent him. He loves us the same way. God cares for us. He loves us in the same way that God loves Jesus. He prayed that, Father, he prayed that we would be one and that they would be one, that we all would be one in unity. That same love, unconditional love. Knowing knowing of our past failures and things we might trip and stumble, that God still loves us. He's still counting on us. Because God knew, Jesus knew if we walked in unity, and this is going to be our stance in the end times, is staying unified in the Word, in the Spirit, walking in love. Amen. Faith worketh by love. Don't say you don't 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 be thinking you're gonna lay hands on the sick. See, blind eyes open if you're, walk, if, you're, if you're at offense with your brother. Jesus said, don't think, don't, don't worry about the speck that's in his eye. What about the two by four that's in your own eye? Don't let these offenses come because they're going to come. We're going to have opportunities to get offended. But if you don't, we'll be blessed and be a blessing to others. Amen? Amen. Now, you're going to be persecuted. We're going to be persecuted for naming the name of Christ. But happy are we, for our name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Yeah, we're going to cast out devils. We're going to lay hands on the sick. But the main thing is, is your name, when it comes at the end of the day, is my name written in the Lamb's book of life. And it it is. Amen. God don't have no, he don't have no, he don't have that ink that disappears. You can reject him. You can walk away from him and God would have to tear the page out of his book because he's wrote it. he 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 don't change. But if you change, God would have to actually tear it out of his book. He ain't going to tear my page out. I'm going to write a chapter. And when we get done, I'm going to write another chapter of people's names. I help get, get their names written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen? Hallelujah. Help God finish his story. To write his. See, there's coming a time when God will set the pen down. That's going to be it. There's going to be no more names written in that book. Only, only God, only the Father can do that. Even Jesus don't know when that's going to be in. Amen. But let's not focus on that. Let's focus on our assignment, our mandate. Amen. To go fishing for souls. Amen. To bring light into darkness. See, Jesus knew if we walked in unity, if we sacrificed our will for his will, that all of his power and prosperity would be evident in our lives. Amen. It ain't like he he didn't, Jesus did, that's a given. He didn't need to pray for our prosperity and for all these things to happen. If we are one, we have won. Amen. We got the victory and we will be successful. That's given if we stay in that unity, stay in the faith. Amen. Stay walking with Jesus. So here it is. When we dwell together in unity, it is here that he commands the blessing. Ain't that good? Ain't that an awesome promise? Hallelujah. 
It is here that His anointing flows. It's here that heaven and earth collide. Has His prayer been answered in you? Have you said yes to Jesus? Because He's already said yes to you. He didn't say a word on that cross after He said, Father, into your hand I commit my spirit. It was settled. Amen. He didn't have to say, save him, Lord. He is the Savior. Amen. He has saved us. He doesn't have to come back to the cross. You just got to go to him. You just got to face Calvary. See, he's not there. He's been there. That's a past tense reality. We got the reality. Jesus is alive. Amen. Let's go to 1 Peter. We're going to conclude this series right here. 1 Peter chapter 5. And hang with me. We're going to read the whole chapter. Amen. It ain't long. But I tell you what, if it was long, that just means you're going to be strong. Because every time you read the word, you get stronger than horseradish, some of the old pastors used to say. And I don't like horseradish. I don't even like to smell it. That's some, that's some potent stuff. Well, I tell you what, I like Jesus. I tell you what, glory. I remember when he was at Bethany, man, and Mary broke that alabaster box. That was like a, that was like a year's worth of wages broke it and took her hair and anointed and put it on Jesus' feet and, and washed his feet with her hair. You know what Judas did? He gnashed with his teeth. This is the devil. See, when you worship Jesus, the devil has to flee. Because the devil said, why did Judas, yeah, he was possessed. Why you waste so much money? This could have been taken and given to the poor. He wasn't going to give it to the poor. He was going to take his portion out of it, out of that money box. The thief was going to steal it. But Mary... Washed Jesus' feet with his for his burial. She didn't know it was going to be for his burial. She was just a, she was just moved by the Holy Ghost and said, "I got my God, Jesus is at my house. I got to do something good. I got a my alabaster box. Man, that's worth yeah." She ointment and put it on his feet. Whew, glory, Hallelujah. Man, Jesus said, "Because you've done this thing, this will be a witness." The whole we're still preaching about what she did. Amen. What are you going to do? What, what, what's heaven going to be talking about you? Just do what Jesus calls you to do. Amen? It might seem something small, but to him, it's like an alabaster box of perfume. It comes up. Your, your worship, your witness comes to him. And he's just, the Father just breathes it in like a sweet smelling aroma. Faith. God loves to smell faith. Amen? Hallelujah. First Peter. The elders which are among you. This is Paul getting ready to leave this earth. I mean, I'm sorry. This is Peter. Peter. The elders, Peter's getting ready to go too, probably, which are among you. I exhort who am I also an elder, a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Peter had a revelation. Feed, what, feed the flock. What's Peter doing? Doing the same thing Jesus told him to do. Why? He caught the vision. He got it, Terry. Feed the flock of God which is among you. He's saying the same thing Jesus said. And you know what he's doing? It's anointed. What he's saying, he's, a, he's anointing somebody. I, I'm speaking God's word and you are anointed. You're going to go out here and teach people about Jesus. Feed the flock of God which is among you. If they don't come, don't talk to them. Talk to the ones that show up. If you have a Bible study, if three show up and you was expecting 30, feed the three. Taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Not for money, but of a ready mind neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. What's Rome doing? They're telling the church what you're going to do. Well, it's time the church is rising up, and we're going to tell the government, no, this is what we're going to do. We're going to worship Jesus. We're going to, get, we're going to save people. We're going to see their finances go up, not because you give them more taxes. We're going to give them more faith. <laughs> Amen. And I'll tell you what, the government better wake up. I'm talking about our day. The government better wake up. Amen. Because you better not persecute the church. Because God takes that personally. Amen. I tell you what, God don't like it to see babies being killed in the womb. God don't like to see boys trying to be girls and girls trying to be boys and going in the, and going in the wrong bathrooms. God don't like it. And the church shouldn't like it. We, won't, we love people. And we're going to call them what God called them. We're calling you saved. We're calling you blessed. Come to Jesus and pass the test. The test is sin. It will still kill and destroy. But come to Jesus. He'll give you life. And that you shall enjoy. Amen. That's just a prophetic word, poem from the Lord. Amen. Sin is bad. It's death. Rolled up in something that looks good. That's what the devil, he'll, he'll deceive you. 
I tell you what, he'll take you to Hollywood, make you a star. I'm talking about the devil. You sing for the devil, you sing their songs, you'll end up in hell, and that's where you don't belong. Amen, don't go there. Don't follow the devil, follow Jesus. He'll give you songs. He'll give you worship songs. He'll give you songs that bring life. Amen. So when the chief shepherd, this is Peter, it says, when the chief shepherd shall appeal, appear, we shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. I tell you what, King Caesar, he had a crown, but it, it's, it's gone. He ain't wearing it no more, but if he put his faith in Jesus, you'll have a crown that'll be there forevermore. Likewise, younger, submit yourselves to the elder. Be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God, what? He resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Teach this, mamas, teach this to the kids to, to respect your parents. This is what God says. If you'll do this, you'll live long on the, on the earth. Honor your mother. Honor your father. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. What are we talking about? We're talking, talking about being carefree to stay free. We've got to stay in the Word. Stay after the Word. Humble, your, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Let Him exalt you in due time. Amen. I was willing to pay for that breakfast. I invited Leo to go, but God lifted me up. He took care of my meal. Why? Six weeks prior, I bought somebody else's meal at that place. God, you reap what you sow. It's a law. <laughs> Amen. How high you want to go, how much are you willing to sow? Amen. Hallelujah. I love, y'all know me, I love riding motorcycles. I haven't owned one in a while. I sowed my last one into a ministry. Gave it. Why? Because I wanted to do it. It was something that, it was something that I like to do. I said, Lord, I want to give it to you. And I'm going to take my time. And I'm not going to ride. I'm going to study. And that's been over probably 15 years ago. But I, I still got the desire to ride. Guess what? There's, it's growing. See, so it just keeps growing. Every time I talk about it, it's growing. Amen? Hallelujah. Cast all your care. Here's the, the whole series. Cast all your care upon him. Peter's saying it. Why? He cares for you. You want to be carefree and stay free? Know that God cares for you. Not only for you, your children, your children's children. But you've got to cast that care and do what Jesus said do. Be willing to take the persecution. There's a hundredfold payoff. Amen. And that just keeps, it just keeps going. It's like a snowball. Once it gets going, it just keeps coming. Cast in all. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, is not God. Some people think God's out to destroy them. The adversary is the devil. He goes about like a roaring lion, walking and seeking whom he may devour. Be the one he can't devour. Amen? You got to be the one that has confessed Jesus. We got to resist him, what? In the faith. Just putting your Bible under your pillow at night is not going to defeat the devil. That's not going to give you sweet sleep. It's when the devil gives you a nightmare and you rise up in the name of Jesus and say, Devil, get out of here in Jesus' name. That's when he's going to leave. <laughs> Amen. He wants to see if you believe what you got your head sleeping on. Amen. And the Holy Ghost will wake you up. The Holy Ghost, he never slumbers and he never sleeps and he lives inside of me. That's why I know when my kids, wherever they go, God is protecting them from all these people, all these shooters, all these people possessed by the devil. We need, God's got people, these kids in this church, they're, they're, they're protected everywhere they go because they're being taught the word of God. That they're not going to be in fear. The devil comes around them, they're going to speak the word of God because the Holy Ghost is there to come out of their mouth. Amen? That's God. The Holy Ghost said in the Bible. He said a lot of things in the New Testament. And the Holy Ghost said, and he said it by Randy, and he said it by Jackie. See, he don't speak by himself. He, he speaks out of a person. Now, God can speak from heaven. He can, he can do what he needs to do. There's angels there too. I'll tell you what, we need to put the devil on the run. Resist the devil steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto the eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that we have suffered a while, now this suffering is not sickness, disease, poverty. This suffering is being in this cursed earth Waiting on, the red, waiting on Jesus to come back. Because we're longing. The Bible says the earth is even groaning for the adoption of the sons of God. This earth is ready to be, re, be made new. Groaning and moaning. Oh, I tell you what, we're going to do some claiming and proclaiming too, as we moaning and groaning. Amen. Proclaiming the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Faith in his name. Giving glory to God. 
after we have suffered, what? God, make, the Word will make you perfect. The Holy Ghost will establish you. He will strengthen you. He will settle you. Amen? To Him, let's say, to Him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Wayne, let's, let's end with that one in the Spirit. We're one in the Lord. Hallelujah. Because that's how we're going to win. That's how we're going to be free to be carefree and stay carefree is to know that we are one in Him. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, if anybody's watching online, that has, has, if you're watching, if you're seeing this today, tomorrow, next week, and you've never committed your life to Jesus, today is your day. Say yes to Jesus today. And say no to the world. And everything that the world has to offer, and everything that the world's trying to give you, God has given you everything according to life and godliness. In this world, you don't have to take it by the devil's way. Take it by the way that Jesus gave it to you. Take it by faith. Put your faith in Jesus. Call him Lord. Call upon him as Lord and he'll forgive you and he'll cleanse you and he'll wash you. And you'll be clean. Your sins will be washed away. See, without Jesus, he is the way to the Father. And the only way to the Father is through the Son. And if you've got Son, you've got life because God gave the Son life and that life everlasting. And if you say yes to Jesus, Jesus has said yes to you. And I encourage you to get into a good church. Get in that church and become a disciple. Decide to follow Jesus. Not Sunday. Follow Him all the way Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Follow Him to the next Sunday. And He will bless you. He will command that blessing upon you. Let's worship Him in spirit and in truth. In unity. Let's stand up. Let's worship Him. Yes, Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray. cares about you. And when he calls you out by name to me, I said, I'm going to call her out. He's calling you out, Morgan. You know, he call, he's calling you. He's calling you out. He's already called you. He's calling you out for a purpose. 
You're going to sing to him. You're going to praise him. You're going to praise him in instruments and in strings with that guitar. He has anointed. He's not. It's not. He has anointed. He has anointed you. He's not going to. He has anointed you to bring his glory to your generation. And this is big, but we serve a big God. He's got big things in store for you. You know what he asked for you to do? Just trust and obey and play. Just play. Enjoy your day. Praise him. Worship him. And watch him. He's going to move through you. Study his words. Study. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. You keep studying and he's going to show that he has approved you. For 2023, this is going to be a year of victory to all those that come around you. There's going to be others that come around. They don't like you. God says, don't even look at them. Don't look at their faces. Look at Jesus. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for that anointing right now, Lord. Lord, you called Morgan before she was even conceived in her mother's womb, but now you're calling her out, Lord, that she's a tall, beautiful young girl, Father God, that has room to grow. And, Lord, we thank you for your grace. Oh, well, there's a grace. There's an anointing right there. That's, that's Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for calling her and appointing her for such a time as this, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the songs, the, the worship songs. They will just come easily, Lord. They'll, she'll, she'll have to get a notebook and have to start writing them down. They're just going to flow out of her, Lord. Lord, you might even just, out of a dream, just wake her up and she'll just start writing. She might even get her a recorder and just start singing at night, Lord. She'll sing the songs that David sang. She'll be the psalmist, Lord, that you called her to be. And, Lord, we thank you, Father God, for opening up doors that only you can open up, Father God, for opportunities, Lord that will come her way that she can give God glory every day because you are the way and you have made her way. Lord, she won't struggle. She'll be just like Jesus talking to the disciples. Say, Morgan, we're going to the other side. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Anybody got a, a word from the Lord, encouraging word? You felt like it was in... In your spirit, you feel like you need to share it? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to feed the people. I just want to feed the flock. I just want to say what thus saith the Lord. And it don't have to come in King James English. It comes in your vocabulary. There's an anointing in these end times. It's going to, it's going to, it ain't going to be a struggle. You'll just be, People will come to you. People's going to come to you in tears. They're going to sense the anointing. They're going to sense the presence of God. And all you're going to do is lead them to Christ and pray for them. They're going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. If anybody's here, never feel, never spoke in tongues, and you want, this is your day, and you want to come down here and agree, we'll be glad to pray with you. Jesus said, you need this gift of the Father. And he told his disciples, and I'm telling you disciples, you need this gift. Don't leave this place. If you don't want to do it now and you want to come up later, come. But come, Jesus said, come. Because he wants you operating. He wants you hearing clearly. And that spirit, that, that empowering gives you those double-edged swords, <laughs> those double-edged ears to hear. Amen. Hear what the Spirit says. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Strength to you, Chubb. Keep sowing that word into those kids. Thank you, Lord, for... Blessing Chubb and Dale, Father God. We thank you, Lord. That your house is a house of blessing. That those children are coming there, they're being blessed, Lord. And we thank you, Father God, that that's a house of peace and a house of rest. That, Lord, you said when my people come, this, they come to your house to get rest and to get peace. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for, for, for Chubb and Dale, for their house being a house of blessing and peace in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Buck and Shelby, you guys keep praying. You're prayer warriors for Jesus. You're prayer warriors for Jesus. I'll tell you, like I told Mama, now Mama, she was retired, but she didn't go out and do a lot. She used to, she said, I can't go to church and watch them babies anymore like I used to. I said, well, Mama, pray for me. She was restricted in her last year. She didn't, she, they took her driver's license away. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, pray. God I said, Mama, pray. God needs her. He needs your words. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, for that anointing upon Buck and Shelby, Lord, that they're prayer warriors. And Lord, I thank you, Father God, that they hear, that they will hear from what Jesus says, thus saith the Lord, and they will speak it out, Lord, and your angels will go forth, and, and their, 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 their words will be carried just like they came to Daniel. They will go to people, and they will awaken them from their sleep. And, Lord, some of them will call you guys. 
they'll give you a call and you'll hear the master call and you'll say, do this or do that. And it'll happen just like that in Jesus' name. Amen. The anointed ears to hear and to speak. Speak. Hallelujah. Jackie, have y'all went to see Shane yet? In the nursing home? Where he's at now? He's home? Have y'all been there yet? Believe for a change. He said, God said, don't look at the faces. Don't look at the faces. Look at the word. Keep calling that word forth. Amen. Just keep calling the word forth. Calling those things that be not as though they are. As though they are. Amen. Keep calling them forth. God just needs our faith. He needs others to receive his faith, but we cover others. God says it's like a bowl that's being filled up. It's like a bowl being filled. And finally, when somebody calls, that he empty, he pours that all those prayers. Whew, it got poured on me, buddy. I tell you what, I went from knocking holes in the wall saying I ain't going to church to knocking holes in the devil say I am the church. <laughs> Amen. That's what God did for me. All those prayers, when I received, they got poured on me. You keep filling up the bowls. The devil's a liar. He's defeated. That's your children. Children, amen. And they're going to do mighty exploits in the earth. Just remind the devil of that. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody need personal prayer? I tell you what, I'm going to dismiss you, but if you need personal prayer, I ain't going nowhere. I got plenty of time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a girl in my homeroom. Uh, Thursday she came in. Thank you for joining us today at Word of Faith Worship Center. I pray God's grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then according to Romans 10, 8 through 10, the word is nigh unto thee in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach that if you will confess with your mouth Jesus as your Lord and believe that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart you believe unto righteousness, and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. We would ask you today to simply say, yes, I believe this, and I say yes to Jesus. Now, if you just received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we would encourage you to get into a good church. Our church is located at 757 Harris Street, Northwest, Concord, North Carolina, 28025. And you can also find us on the internet at wordoffaithworshipcenter.org or wofwc.org. We hope to see you soon. Blessings.